well. And uh, now we're ready to go with our final team. And uh, Jack, I'll just let you take it away. Well, you're ready, Jack. This is mirror. Screen mirror. My bad. I forget my intro. So, Jack, go for it and good luck. Perfect. I'm going to start this with a question. How many of you have seen Iron Man? Tony Stark's working away in his lab and he has screens everywhere. Every surface is a screen. I'm Jack and this is Mirror and we hope this is a step in that same direction. Mirror started when I saw my mother following a makeup tutorial. She was trying to follow along in both the phone and the mirror at the same time. It was a struggle. And for me, as an, as an engineer, uh, I wanted to make a device to help this. So I did, and she loved it. Uh, so I started to think, maybe there's more to this. Uh, so going from there, we did some market research with makeup artists and casual users and realized there's more than makeup to mirror. So introducing uh, mirror. A touchscreen smart mirror offering tablet functionality. Uh, now, you're probably thinking, smart mirrors, I've seen them around. Uh, but most either aren't smart or they require a controller to operate, which to me seems a bit stupid. Um, whereas mirror, we have full touch functionality, as well as a fully developed operating system as on top of the reflective surface. So how it works is we have a LED screen uh, behind some glass uh, that we've custom developed and an infrared touch sensor array in front of it. It is truly the world's first fully integrated digital smart mirror. We even did a look around. We couldn't find any patterns similar and managed to get our own. So I met the team when I joined Patch. I had a six-week goal um, of solving a power supply issue with the mirror. And upon meeting Alice and Stephen, we, uh, we managed to solve it in just one day. We were bored, so we, we'd, we'd done everything. So we decided to make a new mirror, Mirror V2. And in that, we added uh, a 10-point touchscreen, uh, increased the power supply safety by making it external, as well as adding uh, upgraded software and user interface. Um, the, our, now our target market is makeup users when we start. We want to enter batch production soon, but funding is an issue. We think makeup artists is the right place to start because they get the most use out of it for both occupation and casual users. And at the moment, we plan to make all our mirrors in my house. Um, <laughs> now, here is how the mirror works. So you can follow along with Netflix, makeup tutorials, you can listen to Spotify. You can treat it pretty much like an iPad. Here is Alice watching Tiger King uh, while doing her makeup. Uh, she can resize the window if she wants it bigger, smaller, or when she's finished, make it full screen and treat it just like a TV. So as said, we need funding and we need a bit more uh, help in engineering design. So we want to make this easy to manufacture. And we ask if anyone in the audience has any experience with this, please contact me at jack at mirror.ie. Now, there's one more thing. As of today, we are launching exclusive pre-orders. So if you email buy at mirror.ie and have the subject as cheers Tom, we'll give you 15% off the 500 euro cost and all, and we'll contact you back with information for putting down a deposit. This is Mirror. We're bringing screens to the future, and now I'm going to bring Alice and Stephen on for Q and A. Fantastic! All right. Well, people, get your orders in Mirror.ie and code Cheers Tom. Um, we're going to invite James Walton on for Q and A, and uh, Alice is here, and uh, hey. Stephen should be jumping on. Hey, Alice, how are you? Good. How is that end of the building? Nice, a bit warm. All right, well, we'll be, it won't be too long. James, I'll let you uh, go for it. Thank you. So first off, like this feels like absolute magic. The whole Tony Stark thing at the start, I love screens. I have like three monitors here. I'm a real estate baron, the real estate of pixels. So I love this so much. Um, I suppose my, my first question is, is like, 
what has been the whole, the hardest part in um, uh, in making this in the hardware? Like you said, you you in just like one day of patch, you um, resolved your power supply issue. So, and then you also got a patent for like the touchscreen. So, just what? Uh, yeah, what, what has been the most difficult challenge to overcome on the hardware side? I think I'll take this one. Um, power supply was a huge issue for us. Um, at, at the start, we managed to get it resolved in a day, but then we had other issues uh, that stemmed from it. So um, we actually blew up an LCD um, because we put 12 volt into what was meant to be 3.3. .3. Um, I think overall managing power was a huge issue. Like it's a, it draws uh, actually not as much electricity as it used to, but it, it draws a good bit of electricity and making sure that goes to the right places is difficult. Yeah, I saw, I saw in the iteration like V2 had like, it seemed like 90% less duct tape. So it really seems like the second like version came on like uh, like a really far. Um, so then I, I suppose switching to the software and user experience in the screenshots, it seems like you're running Linux on it. Um, where do you see, I guess the experience that you wanna build? Do you wanna build like iOS's CarPlay for mirrors or do you feel like having a full desktop experience allows people to hack on it themselves? Um, having a full desktop experience allows for easier multitasking. So you can have YouTube or Android Netflix while having uh, the reflective mirror on. So it's just easier for multitasking. That's nice. Do you think that you'd have like a two pronged offering where you give some people like, like, so personally I would love like full access to an OS, but I can imagine like my parents might want something that's like dr drastically simplified. So would you do like a two prong offering in the future maybe? Um, we Go ahead, Stephen. Um, yeah, th yeah, that's possible. Um, with the with the Linux that we're using, we can kind of modify it to be simpler for non-advanced technological uh, users. So, uh -huh. so then I suppose talking about the users that you're targeting in segments. So you said that you're looking at uh, makeup users first. Is there any other segments that you've identified that might have like some really novel use for this, like elderly or? people with like, let's say a, a certain health condition or even like a like commercial application? Um, I suppose one I found really interesting was uh, barber shops and hairdressers and stuff like that. So when you're sitting getting your hair cut, if you're watching Netflix, if you're searching the new, whatever it is, and you're still looking at yourself getting your hair cut. So personally, that's one I found really, really interesting. But I suppose makeup artists and makeup users is probably just the easiest one we found to just go straight to market with. Uh -huh. um, and then on the hardware side, so let's say in an ideal case, you have like economies of scale, pricing is there in engineering. What else would you like to add to it? Would you like to add like some of the like really bright bulbs that like make mirrors have, or let's say like a camera in the front and try and do some, um, build some features with that? Yeah, so, uh, sorry, Jack, do you want to take it? Oh, no, um, I was going to say um, we're, we actually looked into, with the feedback from our users, we've uh, discovered that makeup artists want a external camera. So they can say, position the camera at the side of their head and look, work on the side of their face while looking directly forward. Um, that's definitely an option. We've, we've already explored and priced it. Uh, as for integration, we're still working that out. But um, yeah, there, there's definitely gonna be more hardware options. Fantastic. Nice. Accessorize. Well, <laughs> exactly. Jack, Alice, 